this whole week coming up is gonna be kind of just like a grind week on this truck so I'm not making anything pretty I'm just gonna kind of be throwing the rest of the stuff together to try to get it out in like the next week today I'm gonna be doing the fuel system I'd like to ideally get the fuel system done today making all the lines getting the rails mounted I'm probably gonna end up doing like aluminum brackets for the fuel rails I do just have a set of like these standard China rails just the extruded aluminum guys and I might end up just welding some brackets onto the side of them and bolt them right in there instead of trying to use these bolt holes or whatever. So let's get started on that and then we can start running the fuel lines. I do have my triple fuel pump set up here that I got to get mounted. Running Snake Eater 1400s and a whole bunch of shitbox supply line and fittings. This is the fuel filter I'm using. It's a 5 micron, good for E85. It's like 25 gallons per minute. Flow rate, something like that. Yeah, 25 gallons per minute. It says max pressure 50 PSI on there. I'm going to run like a 43 PSI base pressure most likely. And there's quite a few guys that are running those on like turbo setups and stuff. So not really too worried about it. And there's several other guys I've talked to that have said they ran these filters before and haven't really had any issues with it. So I'm going to go with it. I mean, it's basically like an oil filter, it seems like. So it's probably pretty good for a decent amount of pressure. This filter does have 10 AN fittings on it. So I plan to do a 10 AN feed all the way up to the rails and then I think an 8 AN back, which is probably pretty excessive for what I'm going to be doing now with it, but room to grow, I guess, if I ever need to. Okay, so I got both rails mocked up. I got this passenger side done with some tabs welded onto it. So I just took some aluminum flat stock and then took the powder coating off the back side. Welded these tabs on. I'll probably end up sanding this whole thing down and just repainting it for now. You can see the welding kind of discolors everything and then this arcs through right here. This bubble on here is actually arced through from the welding table. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side and then I can start working on the lines. Well I got the rails bolted on now and I went to the hardware store and got some nice bolts and a little spacer for this underneath it. There's two washers underneath each one, which is nice because it does give me a little bit of, of a gap to be able to tighten this thing. Um, this is nice and tight, doesn't move around at all. I grabbed four bolts out of the box at the hardware store and one of the bolts had a different size head on it. So I'll have to go back and swap that one out or get a different bolt. And I was going to paint these things. I'm probably just going to leave them like that. I think it actually looks kind of cool like this patina on there, if, if you want to call it a patina. I just sanded it and... I will eventually paint it, but for now I'm just going to leave it on and get everything mocked up. I started to mock it up for paint and then I'm like, I don't want to wait for a couple hours for this to dry before I do the rest of the lines, so I'm just going to leave it like that. So now I'll go ahead and start getting some of the shitbox supply fittings out and starting to put the ends on. I have some 8 orb to 10 AN fittings that I go right off the rails with. I'll probably just do a loop under the front of the intake for a crossover. My plan is to come in the back side of the driver's side rail loop underneath and then cross back. That's the same way I've done it on the last several setups. I like to come in with the source fuel by cylinder 7. Just because of the LS being kind of notorious for cylinder 7 going bad, I like to feed that cylinder first with fuel. It may or may not make a difference, but if you got to a point where you were like starting to max out the fuel system and you came around the other way and you were already starting with a lean condition and then you started to run out of fuel, you'd run out of fuel there first. So that's why I like to supply it there first and then kind of wrap around the backside this way. Makes sense in my head, but it could just be one of those feel good things that doesn't really make a difference. So I'm gonna start doing the crossover and figure out where I wanna put the uh, fuel regulator. Okay, so I'm just putting in the eight orb to 10 AN fittings. So this side is the 10 AN with the flare on it. This side is just a straight thread with an O-ring on it. So that's what the ORB stands for, O-R-B, O-ring boss. So the receiver end of the fitting has an O-ring groove in it. So when you thread the fitting in there, it wedges the O-ring in. So if you weren't familiar with what an ORB fitting was, that's what that is. And you can find them just by searching like 8 ORB or 10 ORB. And they have the same thread as the 8 AN like standard flare fittings, but they're made for an O-ring. So these rails a lot of times will come with like an 8 orb to 8 AN, but I usually like to put the 8 orb to 10 AN on there. I did that on the Escalade also. So this is a 8 orb to 8, and this is an 8 orb to 10. So you can see the fitting's quite a bit bigger on the left side. Get a little lighter background here. But you can see how much this fitting is tapered in and how much smaller it is. But the 8 orb end here is kind of like straight through, so it really does flow a lot more. 
and it's not really like a step larger when you go from the 8 to the 10 as you would think it's actually just straight through or this one to go 8 to 8 it's actually making the inner diameter smaller to get to the 8 fitting and these rails are actually really really big on the inside they're a lot bigger than an 8 so I've just been putting 10s on them I mean a 10 is like a lot of fuel though that's more fuel than I'll probably need for this thing ever but so the real downside then would be the cost like if you're going big just to go big the fittings are going to be more expensive the hose is more expensive so sometimes going too big is just a waste of money but we're going to do all uh all 10 on this one another consideration too as i'm talking about this is how many times are you planning on upgrading the fuel system so I, I tend to go a little bit bigger on the fuel system because it's just from uh, you know working with myself for the last several years. I change a lot of stuff, and I've I've gone through my share of fuel systems where I started too small and then upgrade and upgrade, 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 and then you end up with the big shit anyways in the end. So like, why start with a six and then go to an eight and then change the return and do all of this other stuff? Last couple builds, I've just been going bigger than I need, and then the stuff is all there, and I don't have to change it multiple times. Okay, so I finished up the front crossover. I did find a, a 120 fitting in my box. I just have a box of random AN fittings that I've collected over the years. So I found a 120 to kind of suck this thing back and then go straight into this fitting. I got quite a bit of room here. I'm just going to go with a 90, and then I'll be able to kind of swoop the line down in between the trans and the trans tunnel and over on the passenger side I'm just going to connect the pressure regulator right to the rail here right now I just have an 8 orb to 8 flare holding it in there so it's it's loose it's not the final but I did get a dual 8 orb swivel union that's going to be able to hold that thing on there and then I'll be able to go out the bottom side with a 8AN45 fitting right through that little hole and then I should be able to pair it up with the feed side 10AN so I kind of like that setup. So I kind of like that setup for here. You're not really going to be able to see any of the lines. This side comes up right behind the driver's side. And then that one just goes down right behind the intake on the passenger side. So it should have a pretty clean look. I'll probably go off of the front of the regulator here with a 90 for the pressure sensor. Just so it doesn't interfere with the catch can line. But this does actually fit on there. So maybe that won't be too big of a deal. So now what I'll do is I'll move to the rear and I'll start figuring out where I want to mount the fuel pumps and the uh, filter. I do have to weld a 10 AN bung to the back side of the tank. I think I need to order some more 10 AN fittings actually because if I'm going to go off the back of the tank with 390 fittings I don't have enough right now. Well actually I lied. I do have some older fittings here. Okay so I think I'm going to make a decision here. Uh, I'm going to move the fuel cell up into the bed. So I'm not really finding uh, a real good way that I like to have these mounted. Because the truck is so low to the ground, it's hard to get the pump underneath the fuel cell and not be too low to the ground or, or what I don't really like. So, so I think what I'm going to do is just take it all out and I'll probably be able to put the pumps kind of underneath or behind this. That way it'll be protected inside the frame. Raise that up. And I'll probably have the pumps, you know, somewhere around here and then be able to come right off the end with the filter and then still be behind the axle. This will fit underneath the rail here, but it's kind of like outside the rail. I don't really like that mounting position and I don't really want to put the filter forward of the axle just in case the drive shaft would break or something like that. Even with the safety loop on it, I just don't like the idea of any potential for something to hit that. So we're going to raise the fuel cell up into the bed, mount this stuff underneath it, and that should be good. Okay, so I got the fuel cell out. I think what I'm going to do is put the bed back on. I think all the work that I'm, that I'm going to do from the top is pretty much done at this point. That's why I've been keeping the bed off this whole time. Uh, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the bed so I can put the fuel cell in there, figure out where I need to cut the hole in it. And then what I want to do is actually hang the, the bracketry and everything for the pumps. And the filter off of the bottom of where the fuel cell is mounted. Instead of mounting that stuff to the frame rail, I'd like to just hang it all from the same spot, if that makes sense. So you'll have the bed, the bolts for the fuel cell will go through the bed, and then on the bottom side of that bolt will hang the fuel pump. So I got the bed over here. I gotta clean out some of this stuff and then try to figure out how to get this bed back on. So I'll come back after I get that done. Uh, I did get the bed back on. Wheel's pretty high off the ground, but I do have it held up by the axle. So that wheel gap actually looks pretty nice. Truck looks pretty good with it lowered now. Camera battery actually died yesterday, so I didn't really record any of this stuff, but I did get the whole 
kind of notched out for the fuel cell. I did weld. I did weld the third bung on. So now I have three 10 a.n. bungs on there, and I have this thing notched out to fit, and I'll be able to do three 90 degree fittings going straight down, and then I'll be able to kind of swoop the line around. So what I'm going to do now is start marking the holes where I want these things, and then I can get the bolt set up and get this thing bolted into place. And then what I'll do is probably build like a little frame, steel frame underneath it, one, so it has some support underneath the bed material. Uh, and then also it'll hold the, the fuel pumps up. I'm not going to use the factory hole that's already in there. I'm probably going to scoot it over a little bit so it's on the top of the flat section. And then I'll be able to use the side wall of this angle piece to kind of hold the bolt head in place. So that's kind of the idea now. And then this, this center section, I actually just took like a three inch piece of steel pipe on the, on the floor jack and then pushed it up and then kind of use the dead blow to smash it back down flat. This bed is already kind of jacked up from when I had the, the rear mounted triple turbo set up in here. So I had the intercooler piping go through here and then the exhaust coming up through there. Bed's already kind of jacked a little bit. I'll probably put some patch panels in there eventually. And then either do some kind of like bed liner or something. For now, let's just get this done. So I got that one drilled out and all. You can see that the flat of the bolt actually rides right up against this. So I should be able to just use one tool from the bottom side and then take the take the nut off from the bottom without worrying about that rotating. All right, so after mocking some stuff up underneath, I think I'm gonna pull the bed back off again. Uh, I think I am actually gonna, instead of hanging a frame from underneath like I was talking about, I think I'm just gonna build some brackets that go between the frame, probably weld them to the frame or bolt them to the frame to hang the pumps. And as I'm going through this, I'm gonna be my own worst en enemy on a time crunch because I'm realizing like all the fittings and stuff that I forgot to order. So as I'm going through this, I just keep ordering other stuff. Good thing there's uh, Amazon and we can usually get like one to two day shipping on stuff. So I just ordered some um, 10 orb to 10 flare fittings for the pumps. And I think what I'm going to do is go with straight fittings off the back and then kind of loop the line around like this. So we'll see. I'm just trying to like kind of running out of fittings. I have a few 90 fittings. I think I have like five 90s. So it'll be a combination of uh, trying to use what I have so I don't have to wait on stuff. And then I think I'm going to do the pumps going straight forward and then a 90 into the fuel filter, which is going to be bolted to the rail. And that's another reason I want to get the, the bed back off so I can bolt the bracket and stuff to the, to the frame without doing it from the bottom side. Okay, so I got the bed back off and I got these spots kind of grinded out. I'm just using some Schedule 80 uh, pipe here, notched it out so it'll fit over the top of the frame. So the frame's actually inside the pipe. Uh, now I'm going to get the welder out and I'll weld this thing on and then what I want to do is weld, not weld, bolt the pumps on to the bottom of this. That'll be the main support and then I'll probably support the front of it. I'm going to go off the end of the pumps with a 90 there and I can't plan to come the side of the frame rail like this and I'll go into the filter and then straight up forward. Okay, so I got some holes drilled there. Those are just M8 125 bolts and that's mounted. I will probably try to secure the front a little bit just because this is an aluminum bracket that's holding the pumps on and it does flex a little bit. I'm going to move on to mounting the filter. Where I was going to put the filter already lined up with a hole that was mounting the fuel cell before so I'm just going to reuse that hole and I had a piece of scrap steel here and I'm just going to mount this like this and then I will trace the holes that I need on this plate and uh, we will be able to mount the filter vertically. So then what I'll do is just just lay out some tape that'll cover this and then I can trace it on. And you did have two dot pipe. Pipe with fire comes out when you when you write. Dad, what it read uh, that top of this in like this way 
I can mark where the holes are. Kind of mark. where the outer limit would need to be and it'll look like that. And I can just stick the tape onto the bracket and drill it out. Alright, so there's the tape on the bracket. One hole drilled already. Let's drill out the other one. Alright, so now I'll take the template off. I know I gotta cut a little bit off of here, but I'll be able to use the bolt holes as a reference. All right, so there it goes. The, all the bolts are in there. Bracket's pretty tight. So I'll just go ahead and round the corners off a little bit just for cosmetic reasons. Try to maybe flatten that a little bit, round it off. And then we can bolt it up. All right, so I got my super boosters mounted. Rocket ship going to give me all the llama thrust I need. And I'm just going to run this line up to the filter here. There's just one bolt holding that on, but the length of the bracket behind it uh, if it did turn at all, it, it's not going to hit the frame or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here, finish up these lines, paint this stuff. And then I did cut this section back out here, so I'm just going to basically go with straight fittings out the back, and then I'm going to loop the line around to the tank. So it'll be able to come straight out of the tank, straight down into the pumps. So I'm going to go ahead and work on buttoning that stuff up. I got, like I said, a couple fittings on the way and stuff, so I can secure this thing to the rail. I do got to figure out what I want to do for the the top here to plug these holes. I think I'm just going to throw an old sensor in there and cap it off. I did order a bracket for the cable throttle. Okay, so I did throw some paint on it. Let that dry and then get everything hooked up.